You come to be our saviour. Come rescue us from all evil. You come to be our shepherd. Come and lead us in green pastures. There is still uh, the old faith traditions in the area, the old Holy Island and all that sort of thing. You come to be our friend. Befriend us. And we know, Lord Jesus, that you come for everyone in our family, our church, our community, our land, and our world. North Northumberland, for years hidden away, isolated, a place of quiet contemplation, a secret kingdom, the cradle of Christianity. Here in sea houses on the North Northumberland coast, things are changing. Um, but certainly what I hear people saying is yes, they're, they're a very valuable resource and there's been quite a lot of work done, I think, to integrate them into the community so they're not so much income as, as part of the village. Because of the expansion of the EU, Sea Houses, like so many other towns and cities in the UK, has become an attractive alternative to life in Poland and other former Soviet satellites. At St Cuthbert's United Reformed Church and the Catholic Church of St Aidan's, the congregations have no doubts about the latest arrivals. Well, uh, we were surprised when they first, some of them first appeared in our congregation, which, as you know, probably doubled the size of the congregation when they came in. But uh, they were wonderful, friendly children, and we, we've done our best to show them the area and to give them somewhere, to, a refuge if you like, somewhere where they can come and have a little bit of peace on a Sunday. To my certain knowledge, uh, from family who work with them and for all those who have been associated with them, they are uh, very dedicated, hard-working people. Thomas and Ula are two such Polish immigrants who have made a home here in Sea Houses. Always when, when somebody says hello, you ask how are you? It's not, uh, in Poland, it's not, not uh, the same. We, we just say hello, hello and sometimes we ask or we ask what, what's going on in your life. But uh, how are you always ask? Are you okay? Are you alright? It's, it's in your culture. Ula has captured the imagination of the local community by helping to introduce Polish language classes here at a school in Belford. Um, we needed to sort of like look at it, how we could look at the community and what we could offer the community in the wider sense. And obviously we have a, a large migrant community of Polish yeah. people here, um, mainly based in sea houses. Uh, I'm also an advisor at the Citizens Advice Bureau and we have migrant workers coming in. It's very, very difficult when uh, someone can't speak English and the other person can't speak Polish. So I've decided to bite the bullet and uh, try and pick up a few basic Polish words. And therefore, I, I decided to source and find out about um, any Polish tutors. A bit of investigation, great help thanks to Carol down at Pinnacles. Well, I did, I did try, uh, I go visit them and um, have wine with them, socialise with them, get to know them better. And then they wanted to come across to live, so I helped find Thomas and Ulla house. And she says, yeah, Yasmin, we've got one. And her name's Ulla. And here she is, she's here now delivering Polish for us here and we're hoping to be able to keep her. I, I grow, grew up in the uh, 80s, so difficult time for, for Poland. Uh, yeah, I went to uh, kindergarten, then I went to school, uh, primary school. Uh, I uh, lived in Rybnik, it's a very nice city very pretty city at the south, in the south of Poland. I finished primary school and then I, I went to high school, economic high school. Um, 
And from the uh, from the beginning of my high school, I I uh, I started to learn English. I don't know why. I just liked this language. It's, it's, it was very uh, for me very easy in comparison to maths or <laughs> other subjects. I mean, Thomas's brother came across and he couldn't speak much English, and now it's. I mean, me and my husband used to go up and sit with Thomas's mother and brother and they didn't speak English, but we could communicate with him. He could understand more than what he could speak. But Polish workers moving to this country are by no means a new phenomenon. My dad was Polish, my mother was English. My dad came over after the war, uh, met my mum, married her, had kids in Liverpool. And then my dad got a job in DuPont in Northern Ireland, so we moved over there and that's where we grew up. At the time when my father came over to England, it was just after the war, um, it was a very difficult time, it was before solidarity, it was actually quite difficult for Polish people to gain entrance you know, into Britain and stay there, and, and in some ways they were exiled from their own country. Um, so there was a, a very different feel, a very different kind of atmosphere then in terms of, you know, it was nearly a sense that people were escaping from Poland. Yeah, I really, really enjoy teaching Polish. It's, it's my first experience teaching uh, adults because for, uh, in, the, in, the, in the past I was teaching children. So uh, I enjoy teaching my language because um, I, I was an English teacher, so now it's totally different. When I realised there was a Polish class running, I thought, great, um, I've been looking for one for years. I used to live in Bristol, even there I was looking for one and I didn't have one. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's, uh, I mean, one of the reasons I'm interested in learning Polish, apart from having Polish friends in sea houses, is um, we went on holiday uh, to Poland this summer, this last summer, and I enjoyed uh, being able to use a little bit of Polish in cafes and things like that. And, and to have the opportunity of coming to the local school uh, here in Belford and um, to, uh, to meet with people in the local community. The difficulty of learning the language, if you're not going to use it, that's one of the diff just to pass an examination. Um, I find that if you're in the situation with the people, uh, you could learn the language pretty quickly. Um, and everybody in the holiday work abroad find that they're using it every day and they very quickly pick it up, especially young people. Which other organisations are offering support? The North Sunderland and Sea Houses Development Trust is one such organisation which has come forward to offer help to migrant workers. The Development Trust is um, we're a charity and we're, we're managed by um, trustees who represent various community groups and interest groups like the, the councils, the churches um, and we've been going for 10 years and we, we exist for the benefit of sea houses. And we've also got a scheme where we've been helping people with the tax returns. A lot of the Polish people are paying more tax than they should because the system's so complicated. Yeah, it was quite interesting actually. We did a piece in our newsletter saying we were starting an accountancy service that could help people with their tax returns. And there was eight or nine of the Polish community appeared within a few days. And they were all in the same position. They'd worked for part of last year, paid tax, and more than they should have done, but didn't know how to get any of it back. So they were asking us to do that on their behalf. And there, there is, in England, there is a variety of churches. Uh, Catholic Church, Church of England, and... Uh, uh, United Reformed Church. In Poland, uh, generally there are, there are Catholic Church and uh, Evangelical Church. I contact them uh, mostly at church, but I only see them in, uh, in sea houses itself, and especially when I call them to Pinnacles for fish and chips. And it's just getting more, more and more difficult to, to staff these premises. And uh, it's would be the godsend actually for the, the Poles to come over. We could not get any British staff. I tried, I had signs in the window for 18 months, and out of that, I got three. Uh, we, uh, we were last, last year, we were here in Sea Houses of only for on holiday, and we went to Pinnacles to Fish and Chip Shop, and uh, we liked it very, very much. The people were friendly. 
and also the earnings were better than in Poland. So um, we came back to Poland and decided to, to come for a long time. Very sincere, very loyal and completely trustworthy. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed with my staff. But what do local inhabitants think of this influx of migrants into their communities? The churches may welcome these fellow EU members, but what of the rest of the local population? People see um, more people coming into their community, then that's when they seem to see it as a threat. So I wouldn't say it would be more easy to settle on that level. I think people are still facing um, quite overt racism, actually. Yeah, there's customers coming in and says, oh, you're taking over jobs. We advertised for work for two years and we couldn't get them. Uh, or, or they would come and say, I'll only work 16 hours because I lose all my benefits. There's too many benefits going about and that's why we've had to get Polish people across. Thomas has recently found himself in full-time employment, having unsuccessfully applied to Nissan on Tyneside. Byłem na dwóch testach. Po dwóch testach już się nie odezwali do mnie, także nie wiem na razie, na razie nie mam pracy w Nissan. He has taken a job with a local building firm as a plumber. A więc urodziłem się w 1982 roku, 17 marca w Żorach. Z to województwo śląskie, Górny Śląsk. A więc jak to młody zawsze do podstawówki, później do, poszedłem do zawodówki. We've certainly made full use of Polish people. We've got a couple of them have, have worked for us in the past. And I think um, it, it's given a boost to certainly some of the, the businesses who perhaps struggled um, particularly finding seasonal workers um, who are prepared to work the hours that are required. They're basically all students and they're here just to make a bit of money, basically, you know, and it suits, it suits our trade. They're now time off university, they're here working, making a little bit of money to go back. There's always the difficulty of um, taking jobs. Uh, from the local workers or taking partners from the local workers. Actually, I, I think about France because my uncle is there. But my friends who was already here, they just called me and said, we got a job for you if you want to come. So three, four days and I get ticket and I come straight here. One of the things they find when they come over, they do work that the local people generally are not doing. Do you know what I mean? They pick on the things that they feel you know, are being threatened, you know, which is not necessarily the case, you know. I think that the Polish people who have come over quite recently have actually taken, you know, in terms of jobs, they take, you know, the low skilled, the low paid, seasonal jobs that, you know, people are having difficulty filling anyway. You know, they're contributing, you know, to <laughs> to our taxes um, and, you know, our care in our old age. Why should that be a problem? <laughs> Sometimes the demand for um, labourers is so great that local communities simply cannot provide them. Well, I think we appreciate, we appreciate, like we, we give them jobs and things, you know, so they're going to work for their money. For the hard workers? The hard workers, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, very hard workers. They do appreciate their pay packet at the end of the week. Yeah. I was dealing with, like, last year's tax returns, and most of them were working in the cafes and shops. But this year, they're beginning to diversify. Some of them are creating their own businesses. Some of them are going back doing the same sort of thing, but on a more permanent basis. So it's like changing even after one year. I think it helps uh, the economy. Uh, I think there was a figure of something like it was a billion pounds more was made in the economy. It's good for the local area uh, to mix, to have a bit of diversity, you know, which is very important. I mean, it depends where you sit with all of this. For them, I suppose, uh, there's, um, you know, the possibility to travel, which wasn't, you know, widen their horizons. And I think that's always positive. You know, for any community, you know, to have more diversity is, you know, is a bonus, uh, you know.
uh, really. And I know that many have come and worked hard and then uh, returned home to Poland um, when they could get employment there. There are still one or two of them working in the village and I've met them in the street and they always stop and have a little chat and uh, it's a nice warm sort of feeling. Yeah, I like them. <laughs> But what perceptions do people in this country have of Poland? Is it really as dark and drab as our lingering mental images of the former Soviet bloc? Although material things may be different, what personal changes are felt? No, czy tak jak to podobnie jak Ula tęsknię na pewno za rodziną. Za chlebem, za jedzeniem. Za czym jeszcze tęsknię trochę za, za powietrzem naszym ciężkim śląskim, trochę za naszym śląskim krajobrazem, za piłką, za piłką nożną, za opatrzeniem. So there we have it. Sometimes misunderstood, sometimes criticized for being here. But one thing is clear. For sheer determination, hard work and persistence, the Poles in the North are now very much part of our ever diversifying society. With all the stresses of modern life, we may not feel we can do much about international conflict and terrorism. But in our own communities, we can learn to welcome the stranger and to respect and value the contributions of other cultures. The presence of these migrant workers among us and the way in which we receive them reveals a lot about ourselves. <laughs>